There we go. Hello, everybody. Welcome to that word chat. So happy to see you. Uh, today we have June Casagrande, who I've never met in person, uh, known for a while. I'm so happy to have her um, as a guest on the show today. I'm sorry. I just realized I'm not on video. Uh, there we go. Okay. Now, hey, hey, everybody. Uh, sorry about that. Um, June is uh, the author of five books on grammar. Uh, my first question is going to be, how do you write so many books on grammar? Um, she's, uh, she does a, a column. She, she tweets. She's, she started a podcast. Um, and she's also a freelance copy editor. And she has a background in newspapers. Um, uh, just an all-around uh, amazing person. And uh, she's been a friend for years. And uh, but I've never met her in person, of course, or just uh, a virtual friend like so many these days. So, June, nice to see you in person. Nice to see you. Thank you so much for having me. This is kind of, it's kind of cool to see. Um, I haven't seen this many faces in one place in a long time. Yeah. It's fun. It reminds me of Romper Room being a kid. I see Aaron and Heather. Uh, and well, you don't need to go through. Lowe. Hello, Orly Lowe. <laughs> <laughs> now I you can't lie. Now I can't lie about my credentials working for the uh, community news division of the Los Angeles Times because my old boss, Orly Lowe, is here. So oh, I, think I, so. Just, yeah. I didn't start the paper. If I said I started the paper and did all the writing and editing and copy editing, she'll bust me. All right. You know, you know, I did community news. Um, so what did so was this uh, like a community edition of the Los Angeles Times? Is that what you worked on? Yeah, the Los Angeles Times had and still has a community news division that had little papers that were inserted in the Times, but published by a separate division. It was California Community News at the time, and then it became Times Community News. And, um, and so, yeah, it covered certain communities. And at one point, it was expanding. And at another point, it was contracting. And it's just down to a few papers now. It's the Orange County, uh, the Newport Beach, Costa Mesa Daily Pilot, which is one of the papers my column runs in. And so on, and it was um, it was a really cool experience, and it really teaches you to appreciate local news, and it really teaches yeah. you to look at the current news landscape with a sense of melancholy, because community news isn't um, isn't doing so well financially these days, and so it makes you worry. Right. Yeah. Right. And that's what I that's what I did. The uh, um, we did the zone zoned editions of the Grand Rapids Press and Grand Rapids, Michigan. And I was um, the lead copy editor on the on all the and of course it you know started out big and twenty pages each and six zones and everything was different and then it you know slowly got compressed and compressed and I and I'm not sure that they're still doing those but I, I imagine not because they're um, they're largely doing things online and um, it's kind of uh, you know it's it's kind of like you say it's difficult because. There's yeah. so much news at the national level. I feel like I'm doing all the talking here. So it's so much news at the national level, but the, at the local level, it's it's hard to find the the money to support it. So, yeah. um, so what? Uh, so you're not doing that anymore? Nope. Um, I did that probably in the late '90s, early 2000s. Um, so mm -hmm. I was a city hall reporter and a city editor, and I was a calendar I did work with calendar and I was a features writer several different roles in that organization and mm -hmm. uh and it was in my job as a city hall reporter covering Newport Beach for the daily pilot supplement to the Los Angeles Times that I said hey I've learned some stuff about editing that I'm really excited to share and I've noticed business writers aren't privy to these facts that I've discovered in the Associated Press style book why don't you let me write a column called the business of language where I share oh. these writing tips with business people. And that eventually evolved into a word please, which is it's no longer targeted to business people that only lasted a while. And so <clears throat> a word please now runs in a handful of different papers. They keep shuttering their doors forever. So it may not go on for long, but it's been, I've been writing a weekly column uh, on language and grammar and usage and writing craft since about i don't know when it became weekly but around 2003 or something like that for you know forever it seems like mm -hmm. so so yeah and so you it started out like in the business section is 
Well, it was a small community paper, and so it mm. was they didn't really have a business section, but it was just mm -hmm. sort of angled that, that way. Was the focus. Yeah. yeah, it was just the the bad thing about working at a small community newspaper was that you were really they, they were on shoestring budgets, and you really had to produce, and everyone. I mean, you have to do you know multiple stories a day, this kind of thing. The upside was you had some creative flexibility. And if you had an idea, they'd let you run with it if they liked it, that kind of thing. And so um, it was just, I have this idea, I wanna do this. And they're like, sure. And it evolved into, uh, you know, almost 20 years of a weekly column and a couple of books and all that stuff. So, and learning a lot along the way. When I look at my earliest columns, I did what so many copy editors yeah. do, which is say, you know, it's wrong to start a restrictive clause with the word which, well, it's yeah. not really wrong. It's just wrong in AP and Chicago styles, that kind of thing. So um, you can trace my um, my evolution from not knowing stuff and thinking I do to mm -hmm. uh, progressive humility over the course of <laughs> <laughs> over the course of the years. So. That's great. So I, and I was going to ask. I wanted to ask you about that. So um, starting out, you didn't. Uh, you did. Did you have a background? Did, were you one of these people who in junior high school loved? diagramming sentences and um, were you into grammar or did that come sort of as an outcome of this? This is where the conversation turns a little dark. Okay. <laughs> um, I, dropped right. out, I dropped out of school after the eighth grade. So I like hmm. kind of didn't go to high school at all. I made a couple of lame stabs at ninth grade and flunked out twice kind of thing. Um, oh. Had a drinking problem, broken home, problem child, all that crap. And then, uh, and then enrolled in college at 19. And so I was just like sort of one year older than my peers when I enrolled and sort of, and so didn't really have any structure. Or edu I grew up in a house with no books in it, you know, like all kinds of dysfunction, that kind of thing. And, yeah. um, and didn't really have a chance to sort of explore intellectual interests until, you know, like 19, 20 in college, that kind of thing, where I was, <clears throat> I had, I had gotten a couple credits from it, from a, community college and a GED, which is which was enough to qualify to get enrolled in the University of South Florida. And so I'm at this big university with no education, feeling completely overwhelmed and intimidated. And all these people dress preppy and I dress like a I dress like somebody who hangs out at Jimmy Buffett's Margaritaville, I mean, like a townie. And uh, <laughs> it was very much that central Florida kind of <laughs> we drink uh -huh. a lot and destroy our skin in the sun and that's all we live for kind of thing. Um, and so college was the first time I ever had an opportunity to sort of get excited about intellectual pursuits and interests. And, um, and so I kind of searched, first became interested in grammar and language and me the mechanics of language in French class. So Hmm. And I was taking French and Arabic at the same time, just because I was sort of going hog wild. I can learn this. I can learn this. I can learn this. So I'm just signing up for classes left and right. <clears throat> and the contrast between how you, the syntax of Arabic, which I spent a year learning, which means I know nothing. I mean, I can, I know half the alphabet at this point, and that's it, like, and maybe five words. <clears throat> but the contrast between how you structure a sentence, the syntax of Arabic versus the syntax of French, versus the language I knew, which is English, was very exciting to me. It was very interesting. And so that's that's the first time I ever really became interested in the mechanics of language. Huh. That, that's very interesting. And so was that, take us into newspapers then, is that how you uh, said, oh, I think I want to write, I want to be uh, a reporter? It took a while. It. Um, mm -hmm. I spent a lot of years not knowing what I wanted to be be when I grew up for, um, for a long time, I wanted nothing more in the world than to be a Hooters girl. I made it to Millen's. I didn't make it to oh. Hooters, a Hooters, a Hooters girl. girl. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> made it to Mellon's. <laughs> Mellon's was the precursor to Hooters or the it, it, knockoff? No, it, was a, it was a knockoff plus a liquor license. Put that in yeah. Percent. So that's, okay. um, that's the culture I'm from. And then I wanted nothing more than to be a bartender. And then when I got out of college, I wanted nothing more than to distance myself from that <clears throat> from that sort of uh, sun damaged alcohol soaked past. And I thought I'll be a business lady, you know, it's in the eighties. And so I bought a couple of the cheapest suits I could and tried to be a sales lady and was mm. literally the worst salesperson you ever saw. It's um, I just, just terrible. Cause you have to want to close a sale to make a sale. And so I bounced from bad. So it was just, mm. when I think about it. It's like Jack lemon in, um, 
<laughs> or Willie Loman in Death of Salesman or something. Well, you know, that's even darker, yeah. Yeah, or Glenn Gary, yeah. Glenn Ross kind of thing. That's that's how it yeah. So it took a long time to realize I want to be a writer. And at the time, I sort of transitioned to a sales job in the classified advertising section at the Miami New Times newspaper, which is just basically you're just taking uh, orders for classified ads over the phone. There was no sales involved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I started tinkering with some fiction writing and I'm like, I like this writing business. And so mm -hmm. from there, I started struggling to try to get bylines and, and get into writing from there. So, mm. so I, so I'm going to ask some, uh, some questions just because I'm interested personally, because I, I uh, went to college in Florida. Where, where was, when you went to University of South Florida, did you do it in Tampa and then right in St. Pete or where? Um, Almost all the courses were in Tampa. I lived on campus for the last three years, which I loved. I was like the 23 mm -hmm. year old senior. You had to drag kicking and screaming out of the dorms because yeah. I loved it, so much. it was just such a cool experience. Um, I took a couple classes at the St. Petersburg campus just to round out the degree, just to get the, mm -hmm. just to finish off the bachelor's. But no, I was very, <clears throat> I was very invested in that Tampa campus. I spent as yeah. much time as I could and loved it. Yeah. Yeah. And you were, but you grew up in St. Pete area. Right. Pinellas County, so Clearwater, so we were sort of yeah. unstable and moved around a lot. And so I can probably trace, I don't know, probably eight or 10 different places in that county we lived. So, but it yeah. included Clearwater and St. Pete and Largo and Pinellas Park and I'll stop now. Yeah, just, well, just so you know, I, I'm, and this is just to, just to show my bona fide Florida connection. I am, a, I'm still a member of the St. Pete Shuffleboard Club. Oh. So, don't get down there too much, but every now and then, <laughs> there play are some two cultures board. there. There are two. One of them yeah. centers around. There are two cultures. One of them centers around rum and uh, melanoma. The other centers around shuffleboard. <laughs> the other centers around shuffleboards. So yeah, that's yeah. Um, yeah. that's Florida. I, I, and I think, and I actually think they're combined. I think it's, it's sort of it's a very preppy, yuppie uh thing to do now like the friday nights they open it up you bring your own beer you bring your snacks and everybody plays shuffleboard it's, wow. you know it, it's what the kids are doing these days <laughs> yeah. okay. real quick I, and, and were you in that same part of we in hillsborough pinellas area I, sarasota and I, I grew up in oh, michigan nice. just a couple of years in sarasota i went to manatee junior college when i started and yeah. now it's uh florida Community College, Sarasota, something like that. I don't know. Uh, but it was in Bradenton, actually, where I went to. Where I mine, had ju mine had Junior College in the name, too. And I edit yeah. that out and make it Community College because it dates me, because it ages me. Oh, that's true. Well, they changed it while I was there. Like my senior, my, my last semester, they changed it to Community College, or maybe even just after I left. So yeah. um, so I figured that that works. Not that I, you know, not that you really need that on a resume you know after a certain point i think but anyway so how do you so then you're so now so all right so that was uh florida and then you end up in california southern california where you've been for for quite a while how did yeah, that transition early early 90s since the early 90s um some friends were moving out here i wasn't my uh my career and whatever i was doing at the time wasn't thriving out there and so friends said come on out and you know when you're in your when you're in your mid-20s and you know you're you're unattached and the world's your oyster you pack all your stuff in a car and say yeah i'll move three three thousand miles whatever and so just never it was shortly after the northridge earthquake that i moved to the los angeles area and so before or after i'm sorry after so oh, okay um, i you used figured, that as a okay <laughs> yeah yeah i'm glad it wasn't a few months sooner so yeah yeah um so and did you i'm sorry did you go for a newspaper job there or uh, I came out unemployed, so I came yeah. out and started okay. temping. What was I did a little? Uh, I did a little temping. Uh, I landed a job at Business Wire. Now I remember Business oh, Wire okay. is a press release distribution service, and they mm -hmm. hire editors. And the main job is just to apply AP style to press releases and make sure nothing, you know, inflammatory is being sent across the wires. Right. <laughs> and from there, and while I was working there, I sent, I saw an ad for a news assistant at the West Side Weekly newspaper and sent it to somebody who's in the room right now, Orly Lowe, and she hired mm -hmm. me for my second newspaper job. I had had a brief one in Florida as well. So, mm -hmm. yeah. so yeah, so that's how I got into ed the editorial side. All right. So you, um, so, so we have a question. So what we do, what we do is we ask people from the, um, 
from the audience to, to unmute and come on video and ask questions directly. And while they, they do that, I go, you know, grab a drink or something, you know, do a little bit of extra editing work for, for pay. Um, so I think we've got one, right, uh, Heather? We do. Mary Norris has one for you. I don't see her. I love Mary Norris. Hi, June. I love June, too. Um, <laughs> I, when I was researching my book, I came across your books. And you're, I really admire that you're so prolific. And I wonder how, you know, knowing how hard it is to get a contract to publish a book, I wonder how you got your start in book publishing. I had, the critical thing in hindsight was having platform. And so if you want to sell a book to a publisher, the first thing they're going to look at besides your credentials, if I wanted to sell a book on gardening, no one would no one would talk to me or look at me. But if I wanted to sell one on a subject in which I can say, I have platform because I have a weekly column in five or six little community newspapers, that's all they need to say, okay, this is somebody who's already, who already has an audience and, and a degree of authority on this subject. And that sort of allowed me to take a concept. So you just take a, <clears throat> You need an angle, obviously. It's like, here's some grammar is not a book. Grammar snobs are great meanies is an angle. So you've got a book there. Um, that's not my, grammar snobs are great big meanies. It's not my proudest moment. I didn't know everything then that I know now, but, um, but, but you need a platform and a pitch. And I think it's getting more difficult. I tried to sell, my agent had me put together a book proposal just a few months ago. And, uh, and she's like, we'll send this to your editor at 10 speed press to the new editor at 10 speed press, which is a sub which is a subsidiary of random house. And she was sure they'd want it. And she usually knows this things and they shot it down. So she said, I think it's getting harder in the language category to sell books. Hmm. Hmm. So I've got uh, grammar snobs are great big meanies. Uh, you know, I just I, I open this to random page. And this is this is this is 2006 paperback. Did you say is that about right? 2006. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just happened to open the open it up to how to impress Brad Pitt. Um, <laughs> I, I, let me do a little reading for you. I'll do. I'll try to do it in your voice if I can. Um, one of the best things about living in Los Angeles is that here you can be pretty much anything you want to be, and nobody blinks an eye. You can walk around with your hair dyed blue. So it was Heather, 2006. It was, it was 2006. Yeah. Now, of course, you can do that anywhere. Um, so that's uh, anyway. Grammar snobs are great big meanings. That was the first one. And then, uh, so what? What is the order here? That then mortal, uh, mortal syntax. That one flopped. Was the next yep. one. Did yep. it really? Why? Why did it flop? Um, I don't know. One of the biggest reasons books flop is you're not working hard to promote them. And I was getting married right around the time that came out. So mm -hmm. I wasn't focused mm -hmm. on it. But also it was sort of it was sort of an afterthought to the set to the first book. It wasn't really it was just it was just more of the same. So yeah, right. Okay. All right. Uh, we do have another I think we have another question, don't we, Heather? We do. Sure. Yes. From Christine Steele. Christine, do you want to unmute? Also in California. Hi, June. Um, Hi, Christine. So I have um, this book I refer to a lot. Um, I always wanted you to sign many of the books that I have of yours, but I don't recall you doing any book signings. I wondered if you had done them, if you would want to catch up and do some book signings. Um, I was curious about that. I would love to. If you um, if you ever want to mail books to me, um, uh, I'll sign them and mail them back to you. Um, so I'd be happy to sign yours. And sure, it's like the thing about book signings is um, is publishers set them up so you can just draw more attention to yourself and your book and that kind of thing. And so as an author, it's like, yes, we want to do book signings. Everyone you can hook us up with, every opportunity we get because it's part of raising awareness. So yeah, hook it up. Can I sleep on your couch? <laughs> yes. 
I don't think you need to. How, you guys are both in LA. I mean, oh. how far away are you? Yeah, I'm in Pasadena. Oh, no kidding. Do you know where I am? I, you know, I was following you on the freeway one time, on the one time, so <laughs> a long time ago, you know, before the quarantine. And I was like, oh, there goes June, because I think your license plate frame gives you away as well. It was into downtown, right? You were following me into downtown. I yeah. forgot that was you. Yep. Yeah, I live in Pasadena too. <laughs> yep, okay. I, I think there were places. <laughs> I remember you read, it's, I have a bumper sticker that says grammar snobs are great big meanies. That's right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. It was a bump. It was a license plate frame. <laughs> follow follow me for grammar yeah <laughs> so one other quick question i'm at the, at the at the back of the book it says that you um at the time were teaching for uc san diego extension the copy editing program i'm now teaching for them so i've referred your book a lot it's helping at least this one you know everyone will discover the rest of your books but um yeah how long did you do that and i know mark used to teach for them aaron used to teach for them I did it for a while. I hit a weird sort of um, HR glitch, <clears throat> which I won't bore people with, but they kind of automatically enroll you in a little retirement program where they take, you know, 80 bucks or whatever out of your check and put it in this thing. <clears throat> and it created a tax snafu on my end because of my mm -hmm. husband's business <laughs> that I ended up working for free one semester, basically, or like I did the whole course. I ended up making like 40 bucks or something. And it was too hard to work around administratively. <laughs> so that's, I liked the work, I liked the organization, but it was just, it was just one of those weird things that sort of steered me in another direction, so. Oh, okay. interesting. Uh, Christine, your, your cat made an appearance and uh, everybody perked up at that moment. Um, oh yes, here do... she is. This is oh, wait, it was a different cat, wasn't it? I've got two cats. Um, okay. So yeah, June wanted to come to my couch. Hope she wouldn't mind Chloe. <laughs> Chloe's beautiful, <laughs> yeah. So, um, so Christine, I have to, I, I, you know, I feel a little bit guilty about this, but one of my questions was, um, I have two copies of the best punctuation book, period, and you know, I don't know why I have two copies of this, but they're both signed. You do? Okay. Why do I have two copies of this? Because I'm going to give one to Christine because because they're both signed. Well, you know what? I started buying duplicate books when I see them in bookstores and I'll save them for the Aces silent auction. But oh, a nice. signed book is even better. When, when I first wrote that book, I faced a little dilemma, which is, do you do AP style? Do you do Chicago style? Can you wing it and use your own judgment? And if you use styles, what do you do to give advice on the subjects that the style guides aren't specific enough on. And so I did not want to use my own advice and judgment. There's actually no, none of the, here's how to punctuate X in that book is coming from me, none of it, because there's enough opinion out there. There's enough, there are enough people out there telling you, you must use a serial comma, you must not use a serial comma. I did not want to contribute to that mess at all. And so I used AP style, Chicago style, APA style, MLA style, and for the stuff in between, I asked a panel of four copy editing experts to give me their opinions. I did little surveys for them. Mark was one of them. Um, Aaron, did I have you do it too? And I sent you both two books, uh, two books as thank you. Oh, just so that's, okay. That's it. Yeah. So, yeah. And thank you for the help with that. It's like. I, I really did, I really wanted a, you know, an expert overview instead of just some lady sitting saying, here's how you should do it, you know? Yeah, no, I, I, I really want to uh, probably a little uh, complain about what a difficult thing that was. Um, but I have to admit, I've only read one of them, I think this one. <laughs> but, uh, and the other one, you're right, uh, I should probably send this, either give it to Christine or, or put in the Ace's auction because this one just has a uh, signature and then this one has a little uh, very sweet little thank you note in it. So, but but here's the thing. So it was uh, so Henry Furman was the other um, panelist, uh, and you know it was a dream of mine since I was a kid to be on the American Heritage Usage Dictionary Usage Panel. And so when you asked me to be on the punctuation panel, it was you know it, it was very it's very nice, it's very sweet, but it was really hard. And I, and I have not, I actually have not spent any time talking to Aaron 
or talking to Henry about the process. But I remember as I went through this thinking, all these questions were really hard questions. And they weren't questions where, you know, you just look it up and it, here's the answer. And it, it really took a lot of thought. And, and I was so afraid that I was going to be the odd one out on every question. I don't know if Aaron, if you had the same, um, the, the same feeling. And so I was so happy that in so many of the questions, it was at least, you know, we were unanimous or if it was two out of three, I was on the two and not the one. Some I was on the one, I was by myself. And a lot of it was like really hard, like taking the SAT and, and not, you know, and thinking, oh, I'll just take my best guess. That's why you guys provided such a valuable services because the easy answers are all in our style guides and punctuation books. I mean, the easy answers we have. And so I needed you guys to say what you would do in these difficult situations. And one of them I remember, I termed my, how to, uh, in the hyphenation chapter, how to hyphenate modifiers of indefinite scope. So 30 day dry aged beef. Do you hyphenate that all as one compound or, or is it oh, 30 yeah. hyphen day space dry hyphen aged? There's no right answer. I just wanted smart people like you and Aaron and Henry to say what you would do faced in this difficult situation. And that's why you guys are so incredibly valuable because I couldn't, I couldn't tell people what to do. I could only tell people what the experts I surveyed would do. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, I think it was a great experience. I think, and, and it's interesting you bring up that point because church just yesterday, I saw a case of, you know, that multiple hyphenation question and I wondered, how do I hyphenate that? And I find myself mellowing more to just using, you know, the hyphen at the end. Um, I don't, I don't believe in the N dash, you know, for um, multiple um, compounds. Usually, and I, and I'm sure the answer I gave in that was just hyphenate the whole thing. Let's, you know, I mean, it's clear. It's, it's not, um, it, it's not overly fussy. People get it. But now I, I, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, I, you know, that's the thing, you change your, your views. So the answers I gave, I might give different answers now. But it's not 30 day beef that is dry aged. It's 30 day dry aged beef. So which, which words are we marrying here? I don't know, it hurt oh. my brain. So I just gave it to oh, you. Oh, right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. Oh, okay, on that one, I probably would not do hyphenate right. after day. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. Right. I, I, I that would have been unanimous anyway. Yeah. Oh, really? If I anybody has, uh, if anybody has any really, really difficult grammar questions, um, ask them in the chat, and we'll get back to you in two or three weeks with a good answer. <laughs> yeah. Like a good plan. Yeah. All right. So that was. Um, so you you had a book before, and this is really, and I just want to say this is a, this is a really nice book. I mean, this is so useful and not only because i'm in it my name's in it but because it you know it does i, I go to I, when i research grammar questions you know i'll tweet about grammar and i'll look things up and and i find that a lot of the 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 punctuation and other things you can't really find an answer you go to something that's really detailed and you know the uh, you know i don't know that it's not in the cambridge grammar but for instance but but you go to these sources and you you find all the basics, all the easy stuff, and the stuff that's really hard. Just you know, it doesn't it doesn't get mentioned. So, um, so I very much recommend this book. And I really like uh, your um, and I haven't actually got spent a lot of time going through this. I've only had uh, looked a little bit, but this is really um, this is maybe you know it. it, it you still have a catchy name, you know, <laughs> but it's a little bit more, um, I don't want to say more serious, but it's, it's, you Academic know. Academic almost. It's, it's, you think, yeah. It's, it's just the, the basic how language functions, how, how words work together. It's, yeah, it's very, yeah. it's very basic and direct and it's made to be, <clears throat> yeah, it's made to be just fundamental. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So that's the joy of syntax. So, um, so that, so that, those are, you know, highly recommended. What are, are you working on? A, this is like five books in since 2006. Yeah. It's one every three years. So what, uh, so what's next? 
What's next? I don't know. I have the um, I haven't had the inspiration to write another language book. You sort of you sort of at one point you've said everything you can think to say on the subject, and I'm hoping inspiration strikes again. The mm -hmm. book that my agent wanted me to pitch that they didn't want was basically, um, it was for writers, how to edit your own manuscript. And so it was sort of a lot of the information of the previous books presented in the way most useful for somebody who's sitting there with a fiction or nonfiction manuscript they just wrote, wondering how do I search for errors? How do I look for, you know, <clears throat> um, grammar problems, that kind of thing. And that's the one that got shot down. So what's next? I don't know. Mm. I've been, um, I've been, right now I do copy editing work for sponsored content at the, for the Tribune company. And so like some of the sponsored content pieces you'll see in the Chicago Tribune, um, the uh, South Florida Sun Sentinel, these papers, I copy edit some of that. And I also do editing for travel rewards writers for Nerd Wallet. And mm -hmm. so I've been working more in the last two years than I had for a long time previously. And so I'm sort of just coasting. I'm sort of not really thinking about <laughs> what's next i'm trying to keep up with a 37 hour a week work schedule and it's um i'm not used to it it's kind of hard so yeah um but, but you're not really slowing down i mean you're you're you're, you're still doing your column yeah. uh you're still doing your newspaper column you still do the blog how often i i, I mean you have tons of blog entries and how often do you um write a blog entry um, the blog entries, I've started cheating and recycling columns. So I will, um, I will take the first couple paragraphs from a column and then link to the column. I'll take some useful information to the column and link to the column. And, uh, and the podcasts themselves mostly were recorded quite a while ago. Um, I actually did that oh. Pearson, Pearson Publishing, which is an educational publisher that owns Penguin or is, they, um, they created that site for me and and contracted with me to do those. They use them mainly for content for their um, uh, for their students, for students they were selling their educational products to. So I haven't recorded a podcast in quite a while. Those are um, those are in the bank. Oh, okay. So yeah, I did I did not know that. Well, I did notice this, and you got it. You got to fix this. I your um, your podcast all say requires Adobe. Uh, uh, what is it? Adobe. It's the Adobe thing. That's that's no longer Adobe pulled. It's no it no longer works. You have to download the podcast. I think. Okay, that's a problem. So yeah. I will. Yeah. Do you want to <laughs> yeah. do it now, or do, do you want to probably maybe after the show would be better to. Right. Sure. Yeah. I'm a little yeah. intimidated by that stuff, but happy to uh, happy yeah. to wade in. You and me both. <laughs> um, all right. So we didn't, and we didn't mention. I think this is the fifth book. I think we mentioned all the other four. It was the best of sentences. It was the worst of sentences. But this is your second, third book. That's my third. It's also my favorite because okay. I because I love the subject matter so much because it is a close nitty gritty analysis of bad writing and how to fix it. And in the last 15 years or so in my editing work, I've become a bit of, a, I don't want to brag, but become a bit of an expert in really bad writing. <laughs> and, uh, and a little obsessive about where did the sentence go wrong? Why is this, so, what exactly is so terrible about this? <clears throat> and, you know, at a, at a syntactical level. And so that's what inspired that. And it's still, that is still very much a window into my thinking of how I approach my work today with a, a lot of the stuff I edit is um, is inexperienced and unskilled writers. And I've learned mm -hmm. so much from analyzing what they do wrong. And that's that's what I tried to do in that book. So I love that subject matter. The why is the sentence terrible? What's wrong with this? How do we fix it? So. Right. So do you um, do you get feedback when you edit or is it sort of a one way thing? Um, uh, not, not much feedback, you know, as, as I'm yeah. sure a lot of people listening can attest, the role of the copy editor is such that the people you work for are a little intimidated by you and they're a little, <laughs> of you. Yeah. and if you say that column is wrong, they'll just, you know, shrink from, shrink from what you say. You, you can literally say, you have to use the word lemon pledge in here and they'll say, okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> well, that's true for for young for young writers, and but I also find sometimes, um, and it, you're right. It's like ninety percent of of people are, you know, uh, who are young and, and are prone to you know, prone to improvement, ripe for improvement. Um, maybe are intimidated, and then every now and then, there's some that just say. Oh, okay, and 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 you know they they appreciate they say the old thank you for doing that. That's so much better now, and they want to improve. And then you see improvement in them. I don't know if you get that kind of a, a feedback in in what you do, but uh, uh, no, I no, um, yeah. I I don't. Which I should say, you know, which I feel obligated to say. Unfortunately, I don't. But it's kind of from where I said it's kind of fortunate because it's sort of yeah. <laughs> it's sort of a relief to not be. I, I don't know. It's sort of it's sort of nice to people to afraid to question your work. You know? right. You're just subordinating conjunction, and they run like hell screaming, "Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am." <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so do you do um, your 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 freelance work? Is uh, why not? Is it freelance? Is it contract? How would you describe it? It's it's uh, freelance. It's twenty five hours for for a nerd wallet hmm. and fifteen okay. hours. I'm sorry, twelve hours for Tribune Company. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, what you talk about is is definitely my experience with working at a newspaper. You know, you work at night. You you may call the person to ask a question, but it's very much a, you know, um, yeah. you're doing your thing because they already did their thing. Um, yeah. Whereas as a freelancer now, there's more interaction and and back and forth. And you're right. It could be. Yeah. rewarding and also you know i don't really want to deal with the writer anymore yeah 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 um i i don't deal with writers directly in either of those two roles i deal with editors who i do who do the first yeah. tier of editing and then pass it on to me and then pass it elsewhere so um so yeah i don't have to worry about whose feelings i'm hurting because they're 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 further up in the process in the in the chain right right if you have uh, if you have questions about um, subordinating conjunctions or um, anything else, um, we have uh, please ask them in the ask them in the chat and uh, and we'll get to them. Um, and I think we've got a question lined up. We do. Our next question comes from Heidi. Heidi, if you want to unmute and ask. Yes, thank you. Uh, I wrote that the topics that you described a few minutes ago now and that you originally wanted to publish in your last book resonated with me since I teach academic English and English for specific purposes to graduate students um, at the university level, obviously. And I wondered if you've considered offering some of the content that was going to go into that book in another format. So for example, in podcasts or in an online course, or if there's some way that you could still share that with people who would be interested in it. Well, question for you, Heidi, if I do, do I have to split the royalties with you? Because that's a good <laughs> idea. Um, um, I hadn't considered it. It's, uh, you know, when you work with, a, with an agent on a book and the agent has a relationship with a publisher and they're your advocate and stuff like that, the thought of doing anything that would circumvent them feels a little disloyal. It's a little like, okay, well, I'm gonna take this project that you put you know, some blood, sweat and tears into and sell it elsewhere in a way that cuts you out of the process. Um, but it doesn't necessarily have to be that way. I mean, um, you, you've given me much to think about, Heidi. I guess I should, I'm, I'm gonna think about that. <laughs> Right. Yeah, that, that would be wonderful. I, I now understand a little bit more where you're coming from. But uh, yeah, I'm sure that there still would be many people who would find some part of that information quite uh, helpful. Yeah, it's, it's it, yeah, it's, there's a lot of good information. Everyone listening to this has a lot of good information that there's big demand out there for. I mean, it's I recognize so many of the names I've seen Carol Sollers here and hi, Mary. And, um, <clears throat> Uh, it's, we are the possessors of some very valuable, helpful information. Um, the question of how we can get it to people, to a larger audience than just our clients is always a tricky one. And it always takes market forces into account. You know, if you want to sell a book, you have to convince the publisher that you can have a success, they can have a success on their hands. And that's tricky to convince them you can do. And it's also tricky to do. So <clears throat> where, where do you teach Heidi? 
Um, I teach actually at uh, the University of Paderborn in Germany. So I'm Canadian, but I did a PhD in Germany and then married a German and now I'm based in Germany. So Okay, so you're, te you're teaching graduate at the graduate student level. Um, you're teaching English. Yes, yeah. So I teach uh, some undergraduate courses, but then also I recently started teaching courses to university employees. So so mainly oh. uh, master students, PhD students, and also postdocs. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, interesting. I you know I think one one thing with it, it seems like there there are more avenues. Uh, Minyan Fogarty has started doing uh, LinkedIn courses. Um, uh, there are all there are so many different ways to sort of get the information out, and uh, and it also seems like you mentioned at one point a publisher said you know uh, language and writing books aren't necessarily uh, um, a big draw, but it actually seems to me like you know every time a new one comes out, I think oh that's you know that's yeah. great, and that actually I think that's great. That's a new take on it. I guess we've done writing, you know, everybody's written everything now, but then, you know, there's always opportunities to, to enlighten people yes. with stuff. Yes. So, um, we, we, we had a, uh, we have a question that we tweeted out. You have a simple test for when to cut adjectives and adverbs when writing. What is your simple test? If it adds information, it can stay. Mm -hmm. If it adds nothing but emphasis, it can go. Example, <clears throat> Mark quickly ran out the door. Mark quickly closed his laptop. In the first example, quickly isn't needed to express the speed with which you ran. <clears throat> run already tells me you did it quickly. So when I say you quickly ran out the door, it sounds like I'm reaching. It sounds like I'm trying to impress on you something that my facts alone can't do. It sounds like I have to embellish the facts because they're not good enough to stand on their own. But when I say Mark quickly closed his laptop, that's information. There are multiple ways you can close your laptop. And if you close it quickly, that's telling me stuff like, maybe you're hiding something that kind of thing so um so really truly very uh absolutely all those and we're talking about manner adverbs specifically as as a lot of people know as opposed to the wider class of adverbs but um anyone that just adds emphasis anyone that any adverb that basically says please please hear me say this Get it out of there. Let your let your verbs, or in case that should your nouns do the work, do the heavy lifting. <clears throat> but if it adds information, if you are quickly closing your laptop, uh, that one needs to stay because you're you're giving so much to the reader with that one little word. Right. Right. All right. Excellent. Um, so, what 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 trips you up these days? What uh, you're you're I mean you've written you've written five books, you edit every day. Um, are there some things that you just, you know, when you, as you're working on something, you say, oh gosh, what, how do I do that? And you, you have to grab a resource. The thing about being an editor or a copy editor or anyone who walks around claiming to know the first thing about language is it's a constantly, um, a humbling experience. <laughs> I had to, I had to choose not to say humiliating. It was a tough choice, but I'm going to stick with humbling uh, okay. because you can just never, <clears throat> you have to accept that you can never feel 100% confident in anything. And that's why copy editors keep style guides handy all the time. So mm -hmm. what trips me up lately, sometimes it's the same stuff that I knew really well backwards and forwards 10 years ago because you forget. Sometimes it's new stuff. I'm afraid I can't come up with any examples, but um, things I thought I knew, <laughs> suddenly <laughs> not only don't I know them anymore, but I forget where I learned them in the first place. Right. So, um, so, so all I can answer is lots of things. I can't give any specifics, but, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but being a ninth grade dropout in a college setting was really, excellent preparation for this because hiding one's ignorance was not an option. 
It was, I either have to reveal that I have no mm -hmm. idea what you people are talking about. I can't play it cool and be like, yeah, yeah, I know who Aristotle yeah. is. Uh huh. I couldn't do that. I had that. Um, was he the deal with the robe? I had to be willing to ask the stupidest of, stu stupidest of stupid questions. And that's, um, that was excellent training for this job where it's just a constantly humbling process day after day of not knowing stuff people think you're an expert in. So. Mm -hmm. That's that's great. That's great advice. That's advice I always tell people: um, embrace your ignorance. Yes. Don't, you know, because once you start saying, "Oh, I got this," yeah. I, you know, I, I, you know, I, I, I knew a copy editor who, um, and a lot of copy editors do this. I don't necessarily fault them because maybe it's not a good example. But uh, he said he turns first thing he does is turn off spell check, and I thought, why would you take away oh, it something? Off. Yeah, because it's Word and it makes mistakes, and I don't need it. Why would you? Why would you not use a resource that's available? Um, my problem is hypercorrection. I, you know, it's same sort of thing. I'll forget things, and then also I think I know things, and I know things so well. It's because I just realized that there's something about that that's wrong, but I've forgotten which way is right, and so I'll make that mistake. What uh, What resources do you? Um, do you draw on what's 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 near when you work what's near your desk uh, your own book? Right, right now most of my work is in ap style so i just keep mm -hmm. the ap style guide so um mm -hmm. so that's mainly it um usage guides like merriam webster's collegiate dictionary of english usage i think i got those words right and garner's modern american usage um i reference those quite a bit for columns when i'm sort of exploring what's 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 this usage issue that I can discuss and make interesting for um, mm -hmm. for readers. So I reference usage guides and dictionaries quite a bit. Oh, I actually have a question for others. Um, I'll okay. finish the sentence first. I reference usage guides <laughs> and dictionaries quite a bit when I'm writing about col when I'm writing columns. But um, but for my editing work, it's almost all AP these days with a little bit of Chicago because I do a little bit of magazine editing. But here's mm -hmm. my question. When I first okay. started really drilling down on AP style, AP's default dictionary was um, Webster's New World College Dictionary. And mm -hmm. Chicago, the Chicago Manual of Styles Dictionary is Merriam-Webster's Collegiate. <clears throat> is AP styles, does AP style still use that same dictionary? Because they don't seem to, the dictionary is harder and harder to reference online. So <laughs> anyone, Anyone who can tell me what the default dictionary I should be using with AP is these days? It is still that one. It yes, is. Yes, it is. Okay. It is still this one. It is, and and I, uh, so and you you can get it. The only place you can get this online, the only place to get this is with a um, uh, subscription to the Stylebook online. So do you have the online AP Stylebook, or do you just use the? I don't. I've been using hard cups. I'll be getting the online soon. Um. Yeah. Merriam-Webster's dictionary, of, I mean, I'm sorry, that one is- yeah. Webster's New World. Yes, Webster's New World can be referenced at uh, dictionary.com, but when you type in a word at dictionary.com and you click a drop-down menu next to the word, it will tell you the sources. It might be American Heritage Dictionary, it might mm -hmm. be a web dictionary, it might be that one. And so I tend to go to, is it dictionary.com, oh. m-w? Um, that one is okay. searchable online, kind of, but it's one of three or four different references, all used by the same website. Right. Okay. And it, and it may be a previous edition. I, I know it was for a while. It was the fourth edition, not the, not, not the new one. Um, so I yeah. So I do I do a I, I do uh, I got books. I got nowhere to put them. Um, I I do AP uh, Starbook online, right. and I add on. Webster's New World, which, which, and here's the thing that not many people know, it's still actually being updated, even though Webster's New World is not in an extant dictionary um, anymore. Um, and, and who knows, um, with, you know, publishing mergers, but, um, but it, it, um, it uh, yeah, I lost my train of thought. It's um, oh, it is still being it, it is still being occasionally updated. Um, there's still you know a, a couple of freelancers who come in and 
um, updated. I'm not sure how often it's updated, but um, that's good to know. I, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, and, uh, a quick mm -hmm. correction: yourdictionary.com is the website. Oh, that right. Is, okay. Uh, source. So I apologize. I, had, I said dictionary.com. The correct uh -huh. site is yourdictionary.com, which is where I turn for anything in Webster's New World. I've got a hard copy from ten years ago, but that's mm -hmm. where I turn for anything like mm -hmm. newer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're welcome. I'm glad to. I'm glad to help you. I, I should just, uh, you know, if you have any other questions for me. <laughs> I think we have a couple of questions from the um, from the crowd. We've got one from James. Do you want to unmute and ask? Oh, hi, June. Um, oh my I'm goodness, just James. Just thinking about my um, own experience, where occasionally I need to go look back at something I've written to remember a particular fact because I have a bad habit of researching things, writing, and then immediately forgetting. And I'm wondering how often you have to go back and look up things in your books. You know, I remember at my job, my work right now with Tribune Company morphed, morphed out of a job that was editing sponsored content at the LA Times in their office. Um, and at one point, a colleague there turned around and said, are you looking something up in your own book? <laughs> <It's> looking, <laughs> and, uh, which I spun into a sales pitch. Yes, please buy it. <laughs> it's it's that important. good. It's better than an author. Um, but a lot. It's the nature of the. Um, what are some things I still have to look up? I think. I think as your brain ages, just information just starts mushing together, and the words "if" and "of" start to look more and more like every day, and it's harder to distinguish and stuff like that. So, yeah, I have to look a lot of stuff up that I knew last week. Yeah. So I, I and I would say, I mean, in, you know, if you, you look in the AP style book, if you're if you're doing the AP, but in your own book, there are you're probably focused on things that you're interested in. And it's a it's less of it's less of a comprehensive thing. There's you probably know 85, 90 percent of what's in the AP style book. And it's that those few things that are questionable that you can probably go to your own book and look in the back and say, you know, um, how's that? How's that done? Right. So so we should all write a book, I guess. And maybe we can <laughs> look it up. Although you would think you would. I mean, it's you think the act of writing a book must must be a great education it is it really is um yeah the, the cliche about the best way to learn something is to teach it it just mm -hmm. really that's the process of writing a book is putting in for your teaching readers something some information you gathered and so yeah it helps a lot i would i would know less than i do now if i hadn't specifically gathered information for the purposes of sharing it with other people to help them. So, so mm -hmm. yeah, it was a very good education. I wish my retention were a little better. <laughs> uh, how are you doing with the pandemic? I always want to ask people that. So you, uh, did you get your shots yet? Are you? Um... I got my first Moderna shot two weeks ago. I'm Excellent. super psyched. I know, super psyched. I keep reading about how the efficacy two weeks after the first shot pretty darn high <laughs> and it makes yeah. it such a temptation to only wear yeah, yeah. one mask to the grocery store i'm um <laughs> i'm hyper cautious i'm i'm the nerd in the grocery store with two masks and the plastic face shield who <laughs> mm. even the old people you know even the old people with oxygen tanks are like she's going overboard um but uh but i'm psyched i'm super psyched because the end's in sight i just scheduled my second shot and uh mm. might have bought some plane tickets don't tell me <laughs> Oh, you might have got. Oh, excellent. Well, we've we've been trying to get you to come to an ACES conference for, um, for years. Well, if you want to have it in Honolulu, June eighth through thirteenth, I'll be there. Maybe, yeah. yeah. Maybe we'll do the that word chat uh, um, getaway. We need. I think that, that sounds like a good idea. I am um, attending, attending an ACES conference is absolutely on my to do list. It's. Um, mm -hmm. I regret missing the last one. <clears throat> the last one before the pandemic 
it was clear early on that wasn't a possibility for me. The one before that, I was this close to booking and then just life. So I want to come. It's, yeah. I get so jealous. I see all the photos of everyone having fun. And I'm like, I know her from online. I know him from online. It's um, I'm really looking forward to it someday. It's obvious you put on a great event. All right. So next year it's in San Antonio, which is, you know, reasonably close, not, a, not as far as Honolulu. <laughs> um, and then the year after that, it's here in Columbus. Um, so I think you should commit to coming to Columbus, to my town, and we can get lunch and hang out and stuff. Uh, and then after that, it's in San Diego. So, so we're coming to you. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and promise I will be at least one, at least one of those. I want to. All right. <laughs> All right. How long uh, is the cell? <laughs> what? Columbus what? is the hardest sell. <laughs> Did I mention that I live in Columbus? Oh, Columbus is the most appealing by far. Okay, thank you. Um, Christine, are you uh, are you vaccinated yet? No, I'm not. You're not. Okay, so if you follow June on the highway, you probably don't want to pull her over and chat yet. But maybe in a couple of months, when everybody's vaccinated, you can have that face-to-face -face conversation. I'm in Pasadena, Christine. So there, you there you go, but you're not getting together yet. But if you're driving in my wake, the air will be COVID free. So feel free to breathe if you're behind my <laughs> Okay, I have punctuation masks. I'll be close by. I will cool. reach out to you. Uh, cool, uh, yes, please do. I'm happy to, happy to sign books and, and get them to you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, I think I think we're out of time. It's been a it's been an absolute joy, pleasure, wonderful. I love it. We were time before. I love the color of your um, your stove. It matches the back of my iPhone. Uh, very cool. Um, and, and I try and I actually I, I should say I I when James came on I I expressed I made a noise in shock. I don't know if he caught it, but uh, James loving the COVID hair. Um, it's uh, looking great. Uh, mine will be like that soon. So uh, thank you everybody for coming. We'll be back in a couple of weeks. Thank you, everyone. And thank you, June. Thank you so much. And we'll see you in person uh, after all this is over. You will. Thank you. All right. Take care, everybody. And usually we have theme music at this point, but we we we'll, we always manage to have it not work right, and then we fix it in post production. When you see it on YouTube, it looks like we're <laughs> like we know what we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> no, no music, Kevin. No. All right, everybody, sing along. Da 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 all right, that's right. You know what? We'll we'll replay the. Uh... Oh, we got your. Oh, there it is. Reviewing oh. Heather's screen. Oh, it's going. This is no music. Okay. Yeah. Not funny. I don't even. I didn't even see the screen. I didn't realize it was playing. <laughs> I'll just keep talking over it. All right. Thank you, everybody. See you in a couple of weeks. Oh, I should, I should, I should, you know, I'll take the time right now to say we've got, um, we're doing a, um, uh, a happy hour that word trade is sponsoring the freelancer happy hour on the Thursday evening of the ACES conference. I think I want to say it's the 21st, um, might not be, it's the Thursday evening, uh, half an hour after the last um session on the thursday of the first day of aces come back we're going to do a um a freelancer happy hour you can sign the signups already online check twitter um i can have and aaron just put it in the chat so um we'll see you in two weeks from that show and we'll also see you then take care everybody thanks so much <laughs>